In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at five new features that I really like in the 2025.8 update. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. 2025.8 has just been released and this time around it's got a heavy focus on AI. If you're into all of those AI things and you don't yet have that AI fatigue, then this one's going to contain some features that you will enjoy. The beta or beta is now available so feel free to go and install that if you want to just help test out some of the new features and functionality or maybe you just want a little sneak peek at some of the new features. I'll leave a link in the description below to the full release notes if you want to go and check those out and the full release for this update will be dropping next week. So with that said, let's take a look at my first new feature and this one is a small change to groups. Previously when creating a group such as a light group, you'd effectively just be creating a singular light to control all of the lights. This is great for controlling and keeping all of the members in sync, but there are occasionally times where you might want an individual member to maybe have a different brightness or maybe you might want one of the lights in the group to be off instead of on and that's where this update comes in. In the new update, if you now select your group entity and open up the expanded dialog, you'll now be able to view all of the individual members at the bottom and individually control and manage them. This is great and it does resolve that issue of not being able to control an individual entity within a group, but I would still like to see this feature expanded on just that little bit more. It'd be cool if we could make use of a little toggle to actually optionally display or hide all of the individual entities. Maybe you're trying to create a really minimalistic dashboard and you're using a really big group. You don't actually want to be sat there scrolling through all of the different entities when you're only planning on actually using the individual group item. Carrying on then with my second feature, and we've got another small but handy one, and this time it's weekdays and timers. As of this release, we've now got access to the weekday selector within the timer trigger, and this makes it really easy to now set up and create your different automations and script that will run at a specific time on a specific day. There's no more messing around with optional conditions, choosing a specific day and time. You can now do this all within the trigger, and it's just a nice small but useful feature. Up next we've got a new integration and this one is a bit of a niche one but it's one that I personally use and one that I like but it's a brand new native integration for Uptime Kuma. If you aren't familiar with Uptime Kuma, it's a self-hosted monitoring tool that can be used to track the uptime and performance of websites, applications and other services. There's also a Home Assistant add-on that can be set up and installed so you can actually run Uptime Kuma within whatever device you're actually hosting Home Assistant on. This new integration will automatically discover any instances of Uptime Kuma that are running on your network and you'll see the items appear in your auto discovery. If you choose to add these, you'll actually be able to create individual sensors for any of the tracked websites that you're following. You can then make use of these sensors within your various automations and scripts and have Home Assistant react to any service outages or performance hits and you can also display them on dashboards if that's something that you want to do. On to feature 4 then and we've got AI. AI has a very strong focus in this update and two of the really cool AI things are AI task and AI suggestions. AI task is a brand new integration that allows you to generate data using AI. Using this new task you can attach files or cameras and then ask the AI what's happening. The output of this action can then be either formatted in text or as a data structure of your choice and this is all accessible from within that new AI task generate action which can be embedded within your different automation scripts and also template entities. This new feature is actually one of the ones that I personally haven't tried out yet but I would be interested in hearing if it's one of the features that you're going to use and what you're also going to use it for. I'm actually planning on maybe using it for something like monitoring the washing when it's on the washing line and also comboing that in an automation to detect if it's raining. That way I can probably get a notification if it's raining and there's washing outside and probably ignore the notification and still have wet washing. The second cool AI feature that I mentioned was AI suggestions and in order to start making use of this you will first need to enable it. To do this head into your settings and select system and then general and from here you just need to scroll down to the bottom of the page and you'll see a brand new section for AI suggestions. Inside of here you'll need to select the default AI to use for all of your generation tasks. For this release you're only going to see the suggest AI inside of the save dialog for things like automations and scripts but if you press this button you can make use of it to generate things like the name and description for whatever script or automation you're using. 
I think the AI suggestion stuff is pretty cool and it will be interesting to see over the next couple of releases how this actually spreads and adapts to other parts of Home Assistant. But I would be interested in knowing if the AI stuff is something you are interested in or maybe it's just something you're sick and just bored of and don't want to see anymore. Wrapping this up then with my fifth and final feature and I'm actually going to combo two different features together here. First of all we've got even more improvements for the already extensive Reolink integration. This month Starkiller OG has added support for Wi-Fi signal sensors, post-recording time controls and also pre-recording entities. If you haven't yet checked out the Reolink integration and you are making use of Reolink cameras then definitely check this integration out because anything you can do within the app you can do with Home Assistant. We've then also got a small change in the reported states that applies to both the Android Debug Bridge media player and also the Apple TV media players. This small change in state is actually also a break in change because if you were previously making use of the old state it will break any automation or script that's using the old state. The previous state for these media players would be on or standby and standby has now actually been updated to be off so it's now super clear and it's a nice welcome change you can clearly see what the media player is doing. Unless of course you've got 10 million automations that are linked to standby, in which case you've got lots to change. But there we go guys, that's been a quick look at 5 of the new features that I really like in the update. Let me know in the comments below what your favourite feature was and while you're down there just type in away. Be sure to drop the video a like and if you aren't already hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. A massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members and if you are interested in helping support my channel which in turn allows me to create content like this then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me all in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.